As you're traveling the highways across California, you may not think much about it, but many people are responsible for that road under you. People designed it, built it, and maintain it, all so that you can get to where you need to go. In this video series, we visit those people and the transportation projects they work on. Welcome to On the Job with Caltrans. Hello and welcome to On the Job with Caltrans. I'm Tammy McGowan, Assistant Deputy Director for Public Affairs. Did you know Caltrans is responsible for inspecting nearly 24,000 bridges across California? and about 800 of those cross over some kind of water. Today in this installment, we're going to go under the water to show you some of the unique ways that we inspect those bridges. I'm here now with Richard Hunt, who is a bridge inspector for Caltrans. So Rich, tell us, how do underwater bridge inspections differ from regular bridge inspections? Well, they're very similar in many ways. We still look for cracks in the concrete. We still look for loss of concrete. Uh, look for rusting in steel, we look for scour underneath the bridge footings, but since we go underwater, the approach method is very different. So how do you and your team, that must take some really intensive training for you and your team to be able to prepare yourselves for this kind of job. It does. In addition to being qualified bridge inspectors, we're also qualified commercial hard hat divers. And to become a commercial hard hat diver, uh, there's a formal 625 hours of training that has to be done. Wow. And that includes about half in the classroom and about half in the water. And of course, the classroom goes with dive planning and diving physics and physiology and all the stuff that you would normally expect. But then when we go to the water, we, uh, depends on the dive school. Uh, we may be in a lake, we may be in a rock quarry. We dive down to, say, 100 feet. We do tasks at 100 feet. We do tasks at 30 feet. We practice welding, bolting up flanges, and just doing different things underwater. And the whole reason for that is to give our divers as much possible training as we can so that they're very familiar with any situation we may put them in because we're, we're very concerned and we support diver safety. We want to make sure our divers are safe and Great. as prepared as they possibly can. Wow, so 100 feet, that's really deep. What are, what are some of the most unusual or interesting things you've ever encountered? In the 25 years we've been doing the underwater inspections on the bridge, the unusual kind of has become usual. We run into cars, trucks, shopping carts, phone booths, old boats, basically anything that people would chuck over the side of the bridge falls down to the bottom, sinks to the bottom, and then we run into it. So we have to be really careful in moving around underwater when we have low visibility so that you don't run into something or tear your dry suit or get your hose hooked up on something. So we encounter that all the time. Wow, that's amazing. So I, I know you and your team must be really used to this, but for me, it sounds so challenging and difficult to do an underwater bridge inspection. How do you deal with things like murky water and fast currents? Well, in terms of fast currents, we try, we try and play the tides. So we run tide charts, especially like when we're working in the bay, where um, Carquinas is our fastest flow. We can get up to eight miles an hour. So we look for the slack tide period, and we'll dive the slacks. When we dive uh, controlled channels, like for California Aqueduct, we coordinate with the other agencies, and they'll slow the water down for us so that we can get in there. Uh, we try and dive less than, uh, a mile and a half an hour. Uh, that gives us the best ability to do our job, do our inspections. In terms of the murky water, if we have over a foot of visibility, uh, we're lucky. So we're pretty much used to a foot or less. So murky water is just part of the job. That's crazy. That's, that's really incredible. So, so if, if I'm a diver standing here on this boat, how do I go about preparing for and, and entering the water? One thing that, that just I can't even imagine is how cold it must be on some days. We pull all the gear out of the boat or out of the truck and we spread it out on the boat. And then we set it all up and there's a checklist for, for that. The diver will set up his gear, the safety diver will set up their gear, and there's a communication between me as the dive supervisor and the divers as we do the setup. Right before we get in the water, the diver gets all the gear on and he's assisted by what we call tenders. The tenders will suit the diver up. They'll put on the, the harness, they'll put on the hard hat, they'll hook everything up. And then after they've set it up, they communicate with me and say he's ready to go. That's the second checklist. 
The third one is the final one between me and the diver. I will communicate with the diver after he's got everything on and we'll check his airflow, we'll check the communications, we'll check that his emergency gas has pressure in it, we'll check that he's all zipped up and ready to go, that he knows what he's supposed to be doing in the job. And then as, as he's telling me all that, I'm looking at him, making sure that everything's on because ultimately his safety is my responsibility. And so when it's all done, I approve it, I say, okay, you're clear to dive and they'll, they'll get in the water. So why do we use a bulky diving helmet and a diving hose rather than a regular wetsuit and typical scuba gear? It seems a little cumbersome. Well, it may seem redundant for me to say this again, but it all goes back to diver safety. We want to make sure that our divers are nice and safe. The hard hat goes on the diver's head, keeps their head warm. They wear a dry suit, which keeps their bodies dry and warm. And I have full communication with the diver. I can monitor their breathing rate. I can talk to them. I can tell how they're doing. Just by simply having a conversation, I know whether they're stressed or they're not stressed. And if I need to, if they sound stressed to me, I can pull the diver out. I've gotten to where I know all the divers and I know how they are underwater. And so I can monitor that. That's great. In addition to that, since it's an engineering inspection, and that's kind of the second thing, is we can take real-time accurate notes as the diver dictates them. If we were diving scuba, they'd have to remember it all and bring it back to the surface and then tell somebody. Well, Rich, don't ever worry about being redundant with safety because that's a good thing. And I want to thank you for your time. I know you and your team have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to let you go ahead and get back to that now. Thanks again. Thank you. And for all of you, the next time you drive across one of the many bridges in California, it's good to know that the hardworking men and women of Caltrans are doing their part to keep you safe. Thank you for watching this installment of On the Job with Caltrans. To learn more about what we do, please go to our official Caltrans YouTube page for additional videos. Thank you for watching.